So in this video, I'll be creating, uh, I have already created, but I'll be showing how we can create a PowerShell script that can open applications and uh, like based on choice. Okay, so let me show it. So Windows X and I and this will open the PowerShell. Now there is a integrated scripting environment isc okay so type in isc simple just type in isc in powershell and you'll get this integrated scripting environment okay so let me just show you the application how it works and then i'll show you what to uh, how the script looks like so for that it is app launcher that is what i've given it the name and ps1 is the file type for powershell scripts uh, so this is just an example okay just uh, like you can do whatever you want but uh, for this like if I want to uh, like uh, do some development related work so generally I need a Firefox and VS code because uh, you all developers work from Stack Overflow only and second like if I want to include database database also so workbench MySQL workbench um, but I do, do not have Workbench installed currently. This is just like I wanted to create it and then when I uh, try to run it, uh, then I realized that I have not installed Workbench yet. Uh, so yeah, that is the reason because I recently formatted it. And third, like for example, if we want to open a particular website like Amazon Prime Video. So for that, we have the third choice. So let me open the first one before I'll press one and I get this uh, Firefox is opened here like I can enter a new URL like if I want to open Stack Overflow by default so that will open or anything for this uh, like uh, you can call it a profile like development profile when I enter so it will open Stack Overflow if I want to enter something else so it will open google.com and this VS code is also open so in VS code also maybe we can open a particular folder of our choice uh, that I will work on it is a nice idea and I think I'll work on in the second version of this one so like if we have multiple projects going on and we can list which project we want to launch at the time I think we should find a command for that but yeah that I've not done yet um, let's leave that for future so let me close this one and let me close this one okay and then uh, it is downloading something for the VS code I don't know why but yeah let's close it so the shortcut again Windows X and I and that will open the PowerShell I always prefer keyboard shortcuts yeah so now let's uh, like if I want to the second option will not work it will only do the what the first option did because uh, as I said workbench is not installed so let's skip to the third option like if I want to open and so it will open prime video here okay so that is that and uh, now if I want to uh, like I can give any videos okay so similarly I can uh, combine multiple applications like for this profile uh, you have to open uh, a PowerPoint and sh uh, sheet and uh, spreadsheet and uh, also Firefox for another the profile so we can try any possible combinations of any applications and how are we going to do that now let's move on to the code it is pretty simple I thought that power shell would be complicated it is not uh, I just started learning it so yeah, yeah. Uh, it will be like ps1 no uh, mm, partial scripting environment PSE sorry integrated scripting environment ISC sorry I can I'm new to this so yeah uh, now uh, this will give you uh, this is the like code editor thing and this is the powershell uh, terminal wherever the output will be shown you can also di directly run the command here um, if you want to test it or anything like that but you can just type in uh, the code here and uh, script and then uh, click on run and it will run okay so now uh, maybe if you want a uh, like overview of how powershell isc works then i can do that in another video let's just open uh this one so this is a file that i created just now because yeah why not uh, it's sunday uh, so like you can see here what i'm going what i'm doing is i'm just uh giving some choices like a menu simple uh, so it is like press one for development two for uh, 
you know workbench 3 from prime video so you can create an, as many as you want now what you will notice here is that this uh, n why am i writing this n here because that is to make it look beautiful like this is just sla uh, dash n uh, no it is tilde i think so tilde n so what this does is or backtick so what this does is just uh, like creates a new line okay it is a line feed it creates a new line moves on to the new line like in java we have slash n we here we have backtick n or tilde whatever it is uh, it is backtick i think yeah. so backtick n and uh, so it will create a new line so like if i run it you can see that there is uh, this and this two line gap here i hope you can see it because the cursor is quite small and one line gap between one two and three so there is one line gap but there is two line gap between this so because uh, i have given two uh, back tick n back tick n back tick n so two lines will be two empty lines will be created two new lines and then it will be uh, printing uh, the whatever follows it now we the second part comes uh, how do we take the input and that is very simple it is so simple i did not expect it to be this simple so what you do is simply use a read host like we have write host to write anything we have read host to to read input okay and uh, that's simple and whatever message you want to give out so just write dash prompt and it will uh, let me increase the font size if you are not able to see it i think it is uh tools option yeah let me do it 15 for right now i think you can, should be able to see it clearly now so again like uh, just uh, write the dash prompt uh, and then inside double quotes whatever message you want to show again this backtick n is for creating a new line because uh, it will look more organized that way now the important thing uh, the next important thing is uh, what to do with the choices okay so as you must have guessed like whatever whenever we want to create an ob variable create a variable in powershell we just have to write a dollar sign and then the name of the variable so dollar choice is the choice variable so that way i have stored whatever choice i am getting it will be stored in dollar choice and if uh, then this is EQ means equals. I'll show you a list of all the comparators if you are having any problem with that But uh, it is very simple like EQ is for equal any not equal uh, Greater than I think it is GT like as simple as that. So just dash one dash like oh, Whenever we want to add a parameter to any command uh, We add a dash. I think it's called parameter only. So yeah, so a simple a dash and then EQ so if choice is equal to one so dash eq means equal dash gt will mean greater than dash uh, n e not equal uh, as simple as that okay just the first uh, letters but i'll show you a list if you are having a problem with it so and uh, don't forget to include the dollar sign dollar choice dash eq one so if the choice is one then what i'm doing this line is kind of useless but yeah whatever so what i'm doing is write host like write host is just printing on the terminal nothing else uh, which is the powershell here so printing on the powershell so write host uh, that is opening firefox and vs code okay and then we'll uh, write the code to open powershell and vs code uh, powershell uh, sorry firefox uh, this is to open firefox this is to open vs code okay i'll dive deeper into that later let's focus on the if and else if thing okay because that is, is like the most commonly used uh, part of a language if and else if and well, yeah, similar stuff so uh, how to write if and else if it is as simple as it could be just write if and then uh, parentheses the bracket like in any other language and then the body of the if should be enclosed in this curly braces like here whatever goes if this condition is true then whatever must be executed should be written inside this uh, opening and closing curly braces okay so this whatever i'm doing this is the logic of the if let's not focus on the logic for the moment and this is the first if now uh, if we want to create an else if so it's else and without space if so that is how you write else if else if and then whatever is the condition the condition is simple if else if choice equals two if choice is two then do this else if choice equal to three then do this 
and if nothing matches then else condition simple else and a bracket if nothing matches then this will be run and this will just print a wrong entry as we have seen that right host is nothing but a print statement that will display the line in the uh, powershell okay so as simple as that uh, so now uh, this is the button to stop it and it is stopped here okay uh, and i have written the cls what is cls cls is just clear screen we can also write clear we can also write a uh, clear host that is the actual command uh, all other are aliases uh, if you are not aware of what alias is, then you don't have to worry. Uh, you can write CLS, you can write clear, you can write clear host. All of them will do the same job. So it does not matter. And CLS is obviously smaller than clear. So yeah, I'm lazy. So I write CLS. Um, and then, uh, so yeah, another important thing here that you have, if you are using this ISC, then you get IntelliSense kind of thing. Like, uh, I'll just show you if i start writing right then i get all the options like right error right host yeah so that is a good thing i just have to press enter right host but yeah i don't want to do this let me remove it so i just was showing how easy it is like you can use a notepad to create this this script and it won't matter but it is obviously better to use uh, this PowerShell ISA because yeah, it makes the job simpler and it makes it look better than VS Code. Like you have the color uh, VS. Uh, sorry, I meant uh, Notepad. Yeah, VS Code is unbeatable. Now let's see how we start an application and uh, see. Uh, this is the one way I found that worked perfectly fine, and that is why I am sticking with this. There might be other ways to open applications. Uh, but this one is working flawlessly for me and so I'm going with this and I don't know of other ways to open any application like for notepad I was just writing notepad.exe and it was opening but for that I think you need to enter the file path in some and some place and do that kind of stuff yeah so let's not get into that uh, let me just uh, expand this a bit and so start process and dash file path now what you see here uh, is this this is the command to start an application just start process as simple as that start and dash process and so uh, like whatever command you see in powershell it will be a, like a verb start and then a noun what do you want to start process as simple as that like a read what do you want to read host host means that uh, the screen I think uh, I have assumed that yeah but uh, like it will always work like that if you are talking about CLS because CLS is not actually a command it is an alias the actual command is clear then dash then host so yeah it always follows that convention um, so let's skip that thing and get to the point so start process is the actual command then we write the parameter like we want to enter the file path obviously how will it know which process to start so dash file path and then uh, you enter in a single quotes the path like firefox where is firefox uh, stored installed in my computer it is in c program files mozilla firefox name of the folder and then firefox.exe like if you want to search it, uh, just how do you know what the path? So just open it. So I'll just go to C drive and then program files and then Mozilla Firefox. And then I'll find my dear Firefox lying over your application. Now you will see that there is not exe mentioned because uh, Windows hides the extension. I don't know why. And so you just have to assume that it will be an exe file because it is executable and uh, just write dot exe attach it. So that is why that is how you have to do just you can copy this path from the Explorer which I assumed I have closed uh, so let me open it again mm, it is it is somewhere it is here and then Mozilla Firefox and then Firefox here so I cannot copy the entire path I think alongside the application what I can do is copy this so control c copy and then add just firefox.exe after that so this is the part that i've copied if i paste it yeah it does not make oh sorry like it removed the slash yeah so yeah whatever so that's how you do it like for vs code it was not that easy to find the path but like if you want to know how i did it 
because as you can see it has stored so like if I type VS code I'll get it in start menu I'll just go to uh, open file location and this is obviously the shortcut not the actual file so right click on it go to properties then open file location and you have the actual location of VS code it is stored in app data local programs Microsoft VS code why can't you just store it in program files this makes me go all these places uh, yeah just close everything and uh, so we have this now what do you we want to do I think it is done so I hope you are clear with everything it is as simple as it could be and yeah just uh, this is for line this is the and similar yeah an important thing that I was about to skip is how do we pass parameters so or arguments you can say arguments yeah that would be better so like in choice three what I want to do is open Firefox but not open just Firefox but open prime video a particular URL whatever URL you want so a particular URL in Firefox okay so what I'm doing is I'm doing the start process dash file path and then I'm entering the file path okay so that sorry so yeah i'm entering the file path that that's the end for uh other course but here i'm just attaching one more that is just dash argument list okay so what this will do is like it will create a like argument list is just a, how you will provide the argument so just dash argument list and provide the argument okay so that will do the job and argument here is obviously going to be the URL so which is primevideo.com and that will open prime video it will open Firefox and then open prime video and now if Firefox is already open so like if it a, a window is already open here okay and let me open a, something like YouTube here okay so as you can see that YouTube is already open so what it will do it will not create a new one let me just run it I can run it by clicking here run script or pressing F5 but what I am going to do is oh, I'll just type it dot slash and then app launcher dot ps1 dot ps oh so yeah while renaming I made a mistake I believe uh, dot ps1 I should not have entered that but I'll fix that soon uh, so whatever mm, mm, and like here if I press 3 so you can see that it has not lost the session okay so it is here like yeah uh, that was uh, like it is not closing but if Firefox is not open it will open a new session now just let me rename is uh, uh, this uh, file it is not a big thing um, okay, just uh, I had created a user yes sorry just remove that extension dot ps1 save the file with just the file name okay app launcher just as simple as that let me close it now if I type dot slash app launcher dot ps1 and not the bracket okay it's just simple dot slash app launcher dot ps1 and you can see that I have my script running here and now if I press like one it will open me the Firefox and the VS code and that is all for this video I think I'll be making some improvements because it is not very useful at the moment like uh, for VS code we can add that open a particular project for Firefox we can add some more things so if ideas come in my mind then I will obviously create a better version like version 2 of it and if I do that then I will make another video so I just don't not save it and that is the end of the video bye